I played that new horror fishing simulator game called Dredge today. And I wanted to give you guys an honest review of that game and tell you, is it worth the $25? And tell you what you're getting into if you decide to buy this game. Now, Dredge is kind of like a dark, almost horror-style fishing game. I know it sounds totally ridiculous, but they actually did a really good job of making it cohesive and tied together really well. You start off by apparently crashing your boat, they give you a boat, and then you're kind of just thrown into the world, following quests, talking to really cryptic type of feeling characters and stuff. And before you know it, you are fishing, selling fish, getting money, getting research parts. Eventually you're following a storyline, you get a dredge, you can, you can start like scraping up materials from the ocean, using those materials to upgrade your ship. There's a lot to this game. I think this game's supposed to take place in like 1920s or something because all the logs you find are dated like the 1920s as far as years go and stuff. But it's actually like a really interesting game. It, it all ties together really well. And the fishing was surprisingly fun, man. Like I, I literally found myself just wanting to get money. Once I got all the upgrades, I finally was like, okay, I don't need to get money anymore. But until I got to that point, I was having a blast, man. I was just going to fishing up deep ocean fish. There's multiple types of fishing. There's coastal fish. There's ocean fish. And then there's these other ones you get later on with quests and stuff. Abyssal. Volcanic. Uh, there's like research trees. Uh, so you research different nets, different fishing poles, different engines. For me, the number one thing was I wanted to get a better engine. You go from being like slow as hell in the beginning. You don't even realize how slow you are. And later on, you get, all, get a bunch of engine upgrades and stuff and upgrade your boat. And you are zooming. And it is super fun. It makes the game insanely fun how fast you're able to go around relative to the size of the world. Speaking of the world, the size of the world is massive. It's actually an enormous world relative to how small of a game this is. So, like, as far as $25, is it worth $25 to play this game? Like, I don't know. I think if, if you would enjoy this t genre of game, yeah, pretty much. I mean, this game is a pretty complete game for $25. I think $25 for about... 10 to 20 hours of gameplay is good when it's like this. There, were, there was no bugs. I never crashed. Game never froze. I didn't encounter a single bug the entire time I played the game. Everything ran great. Everything played as intended. And it was a really well-designed, cohesive experience. And there was just a lot of depth to it. There were like You could find treasures. You could fish for multiple things. There were tons of different things on islands where you would interact. And it'd be like, this guy wants a certain type of fish. Or there's some quest they want you to go do something. Or you save some guy who's stranded on an island. He gives you some money. Like, there's just a lot of things to do. It kind of makes me think of Stray. Obviously, it's a totally different game than Stray. If you ever played the cat game that came out last summer. But it's a similar type of vibe. Where it's like 10 hours, 20 hours of gameplay. And it's really fun to try to 100% the game. And it's a game that you may want to just try to play a second time. And do things a little bit different. Just because it was kind of fun to run through the game like that. Also, the game really appealed to that sense of exploration. It was very, very fun to just go and explore and try out different islands, go to different places, and be like, oh, wow, look at these fish. There were, there were, speaking of fish, there were like 125 different types of fish you could catch. So when you're going around, you're just like, oh, wow, is this, this going to be worth money? Is this good? Is this going to be worth, like, is it, it going to be a great place for me to farm money now? Or like, you know, it's not about money. It's just It was just fun to have that variety. And you're just going to places. There's always something new feeling in this game. Also, the storyline was kind of interesting. So we're in this like weird cryptic world where, I don't know, some guy like, like I'm, the hell's freezing over as far as I'm, I don't know what the hell's going on, but uh, it was, I mean, it's definitely out there, but they do a good job of telling that story and keeping it cohesive and keeping it like relative to its own world. Almost like how the Lord of the Rings, right? It's, it's not a realistic story, but they do it like J.R.R. Tolkien, whatever. he did a good job of making it make sense to its own world. In its own dimension, it all makes sense and stays cohesive. And this game did a really good job with that. All the storytellers, all the lore, everything everybody said, everything everybody did, the way they behaved based on the world they were in, it really tied together extremely well. Also, the progression of the game was just really good. Like, you start off with small, smaller things, it's just a fishing rod and stuff. Eventually, you get, like, crab pots, for example. And those are really good. And you're like, oh, my God, I can make money just placing out these crab pots. And eventually, you kind of phase them out because you realize, like, okay, it, it doesn't make that much money. You made more money than I started, whatever. So, like, you slowly progress through all these things in a way that actually makes sense and in like a nice progression when you get the next thing you're actually excited once you get ocean fishing you're just like oh my god i make so much money now this is this is great you know as you, you get abyssal fishing and you're like oh this is so exciting it's so nice it's so new it's so good like there was a very very good progression for all that stuff also just the getting materials and upgrading your ship you need like lumber and metal and cloth for the main things you would need there are some other things you get from about later on i don't want to spoil too much about it though um just going around and you'd be like, you know, you're sailing around an island and you're just like, oh my God, there's, there's the wood. There's some wood there. I, I need that wood. Cause I, if I get, I can upgrade my, my engine slots and then I can have more engines. And you're like, 
it was exciting. It was everything you did. It was like you were excited for it because the way the game just did a really good job of that progression. It made you excited to every single thing you got. The next thing was exciting to get because of the way you'd been led up into it. Also, just the game at night. At night, like you're not, you know, if you go out at night, then there's all these more, there's way more monsters, stuff like that. And they'll try to kill you, sort of. I mean, it's not really like that, but it, it can be like that in some areas and stuff. And it just was an exciting moment because, like, there's a risk reward. And if you go out at night, there's more likely to be like mutant fish in the water, basically, if you can find them. Assuming your lights are good enough to be able to see where you're going. Um, but yeah, you find these mutant fish, and then the mutant fish are worth more money. So it's like ex an exciting, thrilling experience to want to go out at night. And there's some fish you can only catch at night. So you have like quests where it's like, oh, I want this fish. Well, you can only find this fish at night. So now you got to go out and you got to adventure forward while there's all these things that maybe try to kill you and stuff. So like, it had a nice angle on it like that. It wasn't just like, cause otherwise it'd be like, oh, it's night. Unless you happen to be out at night because you just you were going too far to an area or something. Unless it's like that. You're like, oh, it, you know, it's not, I want to go out at night right now because I want to go do this thing. Or I'm going to, I'm going to brave these dangers because there's something, a reward at the end of the tunnel if I do it. So it made it like, it had a really good system for wanting you to actually experience that horror feel of being out at night in this game. Also, I did notice something. I don't know if it was from progressing the story or if it was just how many days you're alive. Cause the game has that thing at the top of like how what day you're on. And I did notice, I don't know if it, got, I don't know if it was because of the number of days or if it's because of progressing the main story. But the world seemed to progressively get more dangerous. Like the, the evil energy, whatever the hell's going on, was like evolving as I played. Which made it fun because otherwise it would be too easy. You know, you get to the point where you're like, oh, this is all just nothing. But now suddenly I go to the starter area. I came back to the starter area. And now there's like tornadoes everywhere or whatever they're called. Water spouts, basically. Like evil water spouts and things. And, and now there's like, you know, ghost ships that are actually monsters. And just all these different things that are happening in the starter zone. Where really the starter zone had nothing. You know what I mean? So like... There, there was uh, this progression that just kept up at a good pace with what was going on, so I just never felt bored. At no point during me playing this did I feel bored at all. I actually just had so much fun just getting money and upgrading my boat. Like, I literally got to a point where I was like, okay, I know how to upgrade my boat. I, there's all these, th these things I can do. And I literally just played for, like, two hours, three hours straight of just fishing, getting money, gathering materials, exploring, getting more stuff, getting research parts, getting different parts, getting my boat. Okay, upgrade my boat. Upgrade my boat until my boat was fully upgraded. And then I had all the engine parts, and I was zooming, and I was like, all right, now let's actually beat the game. And you don't have to play it that way. You can play it more progressively, you can play whichever way you want, but to me personally, that was the way I wanted to play, and that was a really fun way to play it. I had a blast playing that way. So let me ship you off on this one with my final thoughts here. All right, so the world, the cohesiveness was great. I would give it like 9 out of 10 on being cohesive to itself. The atmosphere, I would give it like maybe a 9 out of 10 again for what they were going for. It, it did a really good job of of being what it wanted to be a uh, progression system. I would give it like maybe even a 10 out of 10 for what it is. I mean, obviously the, you know, maybe 10 out of 10 would be something that have more of a longer term aspect to it, but at least like an eight out of 10, nine out of 10. Uh, and then storytelling, maybe like a seven out of 10. It was good, but it wasn't like something to die for. Right. It was just like artist to draw and caricatures with dialogue, yeah, but it was, it was, it was well told, but, and the art was kind of fun. But it wasn't anything crazy as far as storytelling goes. And then just the overall experience. Like, what would I rate this game on just overall and take into account the fact the price. They didn't say it was early access. So we don't have any expectations of early access. Taking everything into account. Man, I would give this game like an 8.5 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 for what it is. Probably an 8.5 out of 10. Um, it, I, I would give it higher if, it was, if there was more to the game. But also, I would give it less if it costs more. So like, it, it's a balance because... The game, at least when I made this video, is $25. And I would say, if you try hard and go real fast, uh, you'll beat the game in like 7 to 10 hours. If you take your time and you level up everything and you explore the whole world and stuff, you could probably play for 20 hours. Maybe a little bit more. And if you want to play the game like another time just for fun, you know, you're maybe sitting at a 30-hour project for $25. And it's not just the $25 price tag. It's that there were like no bugs. There were no glitches. Nothing was out of the ordinary. Nothing broke my immersion. It all was cohesive. It all made sense. It all was correct feeling for what it was supposed to be. This was a shipped final product that was actually developed, finished, done, polished. It works. It plays good. It was what they wanted it to be, and they're selling it. So Overall, Dredge, if you're into the genre of game, which I know some people aren't, like if you only play shooter games, of course you're not going to like Dredge. But if you're like these types of games or anything even similar to what you saw here in this video... Yeah, dredge like 8.5 out of 10. If you have 25 bucks and you just want to blow it and just, you know, have fun for 10, 20 hours, then you'll take, take a load off your mind for a little while. Then in that situation, I could highly recommend playing this game.